Today is Thursday, uh, the 4th of December, and we are well into the first week of the COP. Um, I'll describe a little bit about what I do at the COPs typically, and a few of the things that I do, and then what I follow in the negotiations themselves. So at the COPs, um, I'm part of the IIED team, the International Institute for Environment and Development. We have a group of colleagues who are working very closely with the Least Developed Countries group, supporting them. We have breakfast with them every morning to uh, get debrief from them on the previous day's work and help them plan the next day's work. Uh, I have colleagues from my communications, uh, IID communications team who have a booth, number 73 if you're interested to come and visit us with lots of IID publications and a lot of people do come and pick up our publications. Um, and we also have a regular two-day side event that we do in the weekend on Saturday, Sunday. It will be on the 6th and 7th of December at the Lima Country Club this year. And the focus this year is what we call zero zero, which is zero poverty and zero emissions within a generation. So not by the end of the century, but within the next 20, 30 years. So we do quite a lot of advocacy. I write and I blog. I also record a daily video log like this one. Um, and I've written a blog that's just come out that looks at who, who should be paying for the impacts of climate change. And I argue with a colleague, uh, Julianne, uh, uh, from the Climate Justice uh, Program, that the oil companies, the fossil fuel companies, should now be made to pay for the harm that their product uh, brings to people all, all around the world. At the same time, I follow uh, the negotiations, part of the negotiations, particularly the part dealing with adaptation and loss and damage. And on both those issues, uh, we are coming hopefully to an agreement, but it's still stalled. Uh, a number of countries are uh, still um, uh, not making progress or not allowing progress to be made. The two sticking points are essentially what shape or form the issue of adaptation and the issue of loss and damage should take in the ADP, which is the uh, negotiating track for the, the agreement that we want to have in Paris. We're going to lay the groundwork for it here. So whatever goes in the package here, then carries on to P Paris for final negotiation and agreement. If it doesn't go into the package in Lima, then it can't go in again later. So we, we'll have missed the bus. So the, the attempt here is to make sure that the bus contains adaptation and it contains loss and damage, even in a vague form that can be honed later. But some countries, particularly the Annex One countries, rich countries, are trying not to have that happen. Uh, we will still see today and tomorrow, hopefully they, they'll decide it this week and not have to go to the ministers next week. But if it's not decided this week, then it goes to the ministers next week who arrive in the second week at the high level session. Um, we are hopeful that it won't go to that, uh, but we shall see.